without further ado, I'm going to show you exactly what 121 attorneys in my course just did last two weeks ago. And it was super powerful. So thanks, Seth and Jay. I'm going to share my screen really quick to show you the unique selling proposition framework uh, that we went through. And the, the reason this is so important is like, like Jay was just saying, the important thing for us to understand here is pe when people are spending more time online, uh, actually, before I share my screen, I'm, I'm going to be diving right in. Um, so, so make sure you guys are taking notes. This is not going to be the usual me where I kind of explain the why and my story and stuff. Uh, a lot of you have, have heard my story. Uh, bankrupt 2008. I'm, I'm motivated to create recession-proof businesses because my family didn't have one. That's all you get for my story because I'm going to just be providing value for the rest of this time. The reason it's so important right now is people are spending more time on the internet. Okay. So People spending more time on the internet means they rely less on referrals and the actual referral nowadays is what they see about you online. So the question I ask everyone in my course and everyone that goes to our boot camps is, is your messaging not just cute or catchy, but is it impossible to misunderstand? It's the number one question I've learned that if you can say yes to that, whether it's a niche brand you have, like, like Jay has the traffic tickets brand, you know, Seth has uh, a criminal defense separate website for criminal defense. The question that's so important for you to answer from a unique selling proposition framework is, is my messaging impossible to misunderstand? That is the key. So the reason why we have to get this right is because right now, the best way to fuel, okay, all of your marketing messaging is to actually understand what I call the fears, frustrations, wants, and aspirations of your market, okay? And what happens is when you have a unique selling proposition phrase of, of some, something that makes you unique, what is your value proposition in your market? And that's clear, it actually motivates your staff and yourself Knowing you're unique, that's one thing, but it will increase the percentage of leads that you can actually turn into cases. And for those of you who just tuned in, I know we had a couple hundred join. Somehow we just sold out the line. We have 518 attorneys on this right now. For those of you who joined, we will be going into PPP after Allison's session. We have our, uh, our expert coming in at around 12. So make sure you stay tuned for that. The reason this is so important, like I said, is you will turn a higher percentage of leads into actual cases if they know what makes you unique. So without further ado, the USP framework, okay? This was just done by 121 attorneys and the results are phenomenal. For those of you who are in the course, I know a lot of you are on here right now. Let everyone know in the chat how, how mind opening this exercise was for you. Make sure you reply to everyone. So what I want you to think through is what are the top three outcomes and benefits that you fight for in your law firm? The top three outcomes and benefits being different than your top three differentiators for your practice. Why are these things so different? Well, your outcomes and benefits are actually what's in it for the client right? So your three outcomes and benefits ideally should tie into your story. So we have Gary Medlin in our course, and he was vulnerable and open enough in the course to go, well, my life story is in 1980, I was shot in the back and I didn't get justice from that. So the reason I became an attorney is because I want to fight for those people who didn't get justice, just like I didn't in 1980, right? And when you, when you, anchor your story as a lawyer, okay? And you actually scale that to your intake team and you scale that to your marketing messaging in an impossible to misunderstand way, right? Gary Medlin, shot in the back 1980, didn't get justice, never has been the same for over two decades or uh, whatever, never has been the same for two decades, wants to fight back for his clients. So when I say your three outcomes and benefits that you fight for for your clients, they should actually come from this, which again, for those of you in the course who, who sent this to your clients and are doing this on a weekly basis, bravo. If you notice, I'm doing it to you guys too. And I ask you, what are the biggest things we can improve on, right? 
But always ask your clients this, right? What is your biggest fear, frustration, want, and aspiration? And oftentimes when lawyers don't know that or, or aren't staying up to speed with the true fears and frustrations of their clients, they immediately use a crutch in their marketing, right? This crutch that we call past experience, past verdicts, past success. And that is weak messaging for everyone listening. Weak, 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 weak messaging. Why? Because it's what everyone else does. You would be better off selling yourself, quote unquote, as a lawyer through your marketing messaging, through what you have your intake staff say on a call by saying, hey, you know, the real reason I, I'm motivated to fight for my clients is because I was shot in the back in 1980 and I didn't get justice. And I am emotionally driven. I am emotionally driven to fight for my clients because I didn't get that in 1980. You will get a higher conversion rate from that than blind, you know, not critical th thought, thought through messaging that's like, here's all the success we've had, sign up. Another big mistake you make is, is you're trying to sell you on your landing pages, but that's a whole other story. And we'll be going through that on Thursday in the course, but all you need to do is sell that first, that first consultation. Okay, let me make something very clear, everyone. All you have to do is sell that first consultation, okay? P you will get a lower conversion rate if you try and sell people on why they should pick your firm on a landing page. You will get a lower conversion rate if you try and sell people on why you are such a good lawyer than you will just hitting on one or two emotional chords, one or two fears and frustrations that immediately go, oh my God, that's exactly how I feel. My real fear, my real frustration is I want vengeance for that cop who, who treated me wrong. Hey, if you want vengeance for that cop who treated you wrong, we'll get a much higher conversion rate. Then choose us because here's all this stuff. And before you call us, let me make you feel tons of anxiety towards choosing us. So actually don't even pick up the phone and call us. That's what you're doing with most of your marketing messaging because you're not speaking to those impossible to misunderstand fears, frustrations, wants, and aspirations. So everyone write this down. If you are doing any intake calls, if your staff is doing any intake calls, make absolutely sure you ask them on the call. You need to do this as the firm owner. Don't outsource this because you need to listen to where their, their tone of voice goes up, where they get a little irrationally passionate. And that is your money making, the, the seed of your money making messaging in your creative messaging uh, for your law firm. So I'm gonna show you this again. So we want their fears, frustrations, wants, aspirations, okay? We want to transfer this into the three outcomes and benefits that you fight for, right? So if you're a criminal defense, what do we fight for? Hey, at our practice, you, you do this in a quick 90-second video. Hey, in our practice, we fight for X, Y, and Z outcomes. The outcome of dealing with us. First, we fight for dismissal. Then if we can't get dismissal, we fight for this. And third, if we can't get dismissal or this, we fight for this, that's what we do here, right? Very different from differentiators, like I said. What's an example differentiator? Hey, we balance speed of settlement with size of settlement. Another differentiator could be what's called your productized process, right? So we had all these people in the course create these amazing things. And uh, one, one attorney created what's called the criminal defense video update process. Hey, we're the only firm in our state that sends you a video update tried and true every week to your inbox when you get a case with us, right? Well, if there's a name to it, name it something, you know, the, the Texas criminal defense video update process and then make it the T-V-U-P, uh, Texas video update pro, whatever, name it something. Hey, we're the only person who follows the T-V-U-P process. You know that in Texas? Yeah, yeah, we send you video updates to your inbox every day to give you updates on your case. Wouldn't that be great? So that you didn't, weren't wondering about the status of your case? Yeah, that's one thing that differentiates us. There are things that actually, uh, it, they should impel curiosity, very different than outcomes and benefits, which should be impossible to misunderstand. 
What's your guarantee? Believe me, you can work on this regardless of the, of the rules in your market. You don't have to use the word guarantee. You can call it assurance. You can call it, you know, uh, if we don't call you back in three days, here's, here's our guarantee. If, uh, if X, Y, or Z happens, here's our guarantee. Ken Hardison did uh, the, you know, 30 days, uh, we'll take your PI case and proactively we will ask you in 30 days whether you're happy, whether you want to keep us. And if you're not, we'll help you find another law firm. That could be labeled as a guarantee. Hey, you could throw, you could throw in front of that, we're the only firm in our market who does this guarantee. We're the only firm that will call you in 30 days and say proactively, are you happy with us? If not, we'll help you find another firm. What are your power words, right? A lot of lawyers, when they do their marketing, they're not using power words. So it doesn't, it doesn't cause a potential client to feel emotionally triggered enough to reach out to you. There's a very big difference between using the word bankrupt, okay? Bankrupt versus uh, financially struggling. Very different using uh, uh, cash, currency, okay? Which one's the power word, okay? You, th this, is a, this is a feeling thing, right? Are you using power words in your marketing or are you using intellectual collegial words in your marketing that make you seem esteemed, okay? Last, last but not least is this practice area specific segment, right? So important that you have practice area specific differentiators. What does that look like? Well, a practice area differentiator is basically, hey, we do, let's say you do three practice areas. Well, you'll have a general three outcomes you fight for. You'll have a general three differentiators for your practice as a whole. But what I always say is like, what's your practice area specific differentiator? Is your staff trained on this? So when you get a good case, that's actually going to vet you out that they can in, in a sentence or two say, hey, we handle our med mal cases like this. We handle our surgical malpractice cases like this. It's only a couple sentences, right? We, we handle uh, auto accident cases like yours. Here's our process. Here's our practice area specific unique selling proposition. Why should you choose us? Okay, the waters are getting muddier and muddier, everyone. I mean, People used to see 3,000 advertisements. Now I'd argue they're seeing 6,000 with how much they're spending on the internet, okay? When COVID-19 hit, 70% increase in internet usage. This is not a joke. There has never been a spike like this since the dot-com bubble, okay? In three months, a 70% spike in internet usage, 43% increase in online video consumption. This is a seismic, cataclysmic shift. And it all starts with A, understanding the fears, frustrations, wants, and aspirations of your ideal clients, okay? And then creating what I call, like I say, impossible to misunderstand messaging and the marriage of these two things, okay? Where you understand these, what I call word alignment. This is where you get into what I call word alignment, okay? The word alignment uh, system looks like this. Word alignment is, is for any lawyer to have success with marketing. Like this is why the, like the smartest guys in the room with this is Seth and Jay. They're on this call. Like they get this. They understand all the different ways clients within their niche search for them. That's why Seth has a criminal defense site and an estate site. That's why Jay has a traffic ticket site. That's why he understands his niche demand blueprint. And then they match that with their unique selling propositions in a fragmented way that all ties under their main firm's brand. So we have to get into word alignment to see success with our marketing. 